Winning is a wonderful thing. It's exhilarating. It's a great reward. Positive reinforcement for hard work. Dedication. Encouraging us to be the best we can be. Perhaps nobody knew more about the art of winning than former NFL football coach Vince Lombardi. Here's a, a snippet of the man himself, his philosophy of life. Winning is not a sometime thing. It's an all the time thing. You don't win once in a while, and you don't do things right once in a while. You do them right all the time. Winning is a habit. You got to play with your heart, with every ounce of fiber in your body. I've never known a man worth the salt who deep down in his heart didn't appreciate the grind, the discipline, and to win, and to win, and to win. There's no room for second place. There's only one place, and that's first place. I finished second twice in my time, and I don't ever want to finish second again. But I firmly hold that a man's finest hour, the greatest fulfillment to anything he holds dear, is that moment when he has worked his heart out in a good cause and lays exhausted on the field of battle. Victorious. Winning isn't everything. It's the only thing, one of Lombardi's most famous quotes. The man knew how to win, motivating his small market Green Bay Packers to three straight league championships, five and seven years, and Super Bowl victories. That's a lot of pressure to perform. But there, well, there does appear to be people on the other side of Lombardi, even though I can't imagine these people motivating anybody. Because they're talking about losers. What about the losers, they keep asking. Here's another school of thought from an equally passionate Bill Murray in the movie Meatballs. Hey, gang, come on. Look, it just because we're losing doesn't mean it's all over. Cut the crap, Morty. I mean, the Mohawks have beaten us the last 12 years. They're going to beat us again. That's just the attitude we don't need, Phil. Sure. Mohawk has beaten us 12 years in a row. But it doesn't matter. It just doesn't matter. It just doesn't matter. Ha! Even if we win, even if we play so far over our heads that our noses bleed for a week to ten days, even if God in heaven above comes down and points his hand at our side of the field, even if every man, woman, and child held hands together and prayed for us, to win, it just wouldn't matter because all the really good looking girls would still go out with the guys from Mohawk because they got all the money. <laughs> it just doesn't matter if we win or we lose. It just Made in Canada movie, by the way. Anyway, winning doesn't matter. No, that's not his message. He was telling those kids to stop being defeatist to not give up, to never surrender, to not forget, to enjoy the competition itself, to have fun with that. They went out and had fun and, and won. But some people in charge of things are taking this winning doesn't matter idea to a whole new level. Pulling an anti-Lombardi where fun isn't everything. It's the only thing. Across the country, kids' sports leagues are eliminating competition Altogether, children as old as 12 playing soccer and softball and hockey and basketball, no scores, no standings, no trophies. Tournaments are now festivals of fun. I don't know how to have fun without a score, frankly, but they claim that's the only way all the kids can have all the fun all the time. So this is aimed at player development over victory, protecting the fragile egos by removing disappointment. A growing movement endorsed by Sport Canada, a federal government body that, according to a spring 2011 Winnipeg Youth Soccer Association newsletter, will make further funding decisions based on this philosophy. You want money? Take the scoreboard away. Refuse to clobber competition? Reform or die? The goal behind this is to keep people involved in sport by staying positive. But... What kind of lesson is this really teaching? That it's okay not to be your best? It, you just, just show up? It's the same philosophy that's being rammed through our education system when teachers like Lyndon Dorval 
aren't supposed to keep score, aren't allowed to give students a correct score of zero when they don't hand in the work. All right, I recently caught up with a good man, Alan Fox, one-time Wimbledon quarter finalist, author of books such as The Winner's Mind and Tennis, Winning the Mental Match. What does he think about the removal of scoreboards? Bad idea. And it's a bad idea because you think it's wrong to try to jack kids' feelings up artificially? Or you tell me why. Well, to start with, you have to deal with human nature as it is, not as we might like it. Uh, and the fact is, is that uh, we're genetically wired uh, to be competitive in games and other things. And uh, we naturally keep score, and we want to know if we've won or not. And so when you take the, when you take the, the scoreboard away, uh, yes, kids can't lose, but they can't win either. Tell me about this uh, business about being uh, genetically uh, wired. Uh, clarify for me, what specifically are you talking about? Well, and, and to get a little bit philosophical here, but uh, you know, our, our genetics probably evolved 50,000 years ago, say, in, in, in small uh, extended family groups. Uh, human beings uh, rank themselves. We're a social species like chimpanzees or wolves. And in all social species, uh, there's a hierarchy. Some individuals are higher on the hierarchy than others. Uh, and there's good purpose for this, and there certainly was at one time. Uh, it had survival value. If you were ranked high, you would be more likely to eat if food was scarce. If you were ranked low, you might starve. Better territory, and so forth. We can, I won't go through all of that. But uh, there's there's strong survival value in in getting oneself ranked high. And so how do we do that? Well, the animals do it by fighting or threatening to fight. Uh, and so the strongest, smartest, uh, most willful, courageous ones uh, tend to be the leaders. They tend to be ranked high, uh, which is about what you'd want for a leader in primitive times, 50,000 years ago, say. So human beings... Uh, they did it somewhat the same way, I would guess. Uh, and, and that genetic makeup is with us today. And so we compete, and people are very, very concerned with ranking. Uh, you can say it doesn't matter, but uh, in business, for instance, uh, there's a ranking. You, you look at a man that's, or a woman that's got $10 million, and you say, why is she trying to get more, or why is he trying to get more? Why? Not to spend it particularly, uh, but to be ranked higher relative to other business people. And so there is this drive within us uh, for ranking. And uh, some, uh, athletic contests are one way that we rank ourselves. And so we're, we're, we're sort of driven to do it. We like to play these games. Uh, our, our nervous system tells us to. And we like to try to win them. And yes, it isn't fun to lose them. Uh, we get over it, and we practice and go out and try some more. Now, okay. it, it, going against that is, is going against nature itself. Dr. Fox, you, you mentioned the F word, fun. The, yeah. the people who are rigorously, almost religiously egalitarian say all kids are the same. Uh, we shouldn't rank anybody. And we should make sure that kids have fun all the time. So you say? Well, I say it, it, it's fun to, uh, to compete. It's fun to win. It's fun to work on your skills and get better at them and then go try again. Th that's the fun. When, when you take away, when you, when you try to make everything totally uncompetitive and take away the ability to uh, test yourself, you take away much of the fun. Uh, and the kids are keeping score anyway. I mean, people are trying to ram these, these sorts of things down their throats. Uh, they don't swallow it anyway. I remember my young son was playing in a, a basketball league when he was in the fourth grade, and they, they thought they would do the kids a favor and not keep score. I mean, that was just silly. The kids kept score anyway. They want to know who wins. In fact, in fact I remember... Uh, uh, I remember a sort of a silly joke, uh, and, and that is uh, uh, 
the the kid's dad goes out to play goes out to play golf with a friend, and 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 he comes back and the little kid says, "Well, Dad, who won?" And the dad said, "Well, uh, we just played for fun." And the kid said, "Yeah, okay, Dad. Then who had the most fun?" <laughs> We like that one. Dr. Fox, let me, let me, you know, since you're okay with philosophy and psychology tonight, uh, let me go down those, those tracks with you. If we can agree that school is about development, intellectual development, physical development, some would even say spiritual development, if that's what school is about to help kids evolve, would you say that not giving them the opportunity to have winners and losers, to not have scores, uh, in other words, not reflect what real life is about, would you say that that retards or arrests development? I would say it, it certainly slows it down. It retards it. Uh, people need goals. They need achievement. Uh, that's another drive that we have, uh, an achievement drive. We like to get good at things. Uh, but in order to feel we've achieved, we have to be measured. There has to be some sort of uh, benefit in some way uh, on a measurement basis for, for our hard work. Uh, and, and, I mean, I've taught college, uh, and uh, I have friends that teach. And uh, when, there's no, uh, when there's no grade in the class, actually, you lose motivation. That's just a, a fact of, of life. I mean, a, a lot of this, a lot of this, look at, I'm a psychologist, uh, and a lot of this sort of nonsense is coming from uh, my fellows in the field. And it's an, an unfortunate mixture of uh, political correctness and science together, uh, where, where the, the political correctness is, is directing the science. Uh, and so, yes, it, it, it is, uh, and these are thoughts that came out of the 60s and 70s, that, that competition is, can be harsh. And so we, we want to take uh, that harshness away. That would all be fine if we could rewire the individual. Uh, unfortunately, we can't do that. And so, but, but there was this movement, uh, the self-esteem theory movement, uh, that's the biggest uh, load of bunkum you can come up with, okay? The idea that there should not be negative reinforcement, it should all be positive reinforcement. The, 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 these are unproven ideas. These are attractive on the surface uh, and would be nice, uh, but they're, they're unproven. For instance, uh, self-esteem uh, does not come uh, simply from somebody telling you you're good when you aren't. Self-esteem comes from achievement, actual achievement, and uh, the, the, the just verbal, uh, whatever, pats on the back, they don't do it. <laughs>